Right, so as you can see, there's a car right in the way. It's a wet and cold rainy night. You can hear, most likely hear the rain um, hitting the tin roof. And um, as you can see, there's not a heck of a lot of room in between here. So what I'm gonna do is do a very quick video um, on how many amps it's pulling at different um, at different loads. So what I wanna do is I've got myself, it's just arrived in the mail, one of these. Um, so a clamp meter for DC. Um, this is the, um, the 204, so it does the true RMS, which is only useful for um, AC. But um, yeah, this arrived after a week or a week and a half, so it was fantastic. We've got this in time to be able to do this test. So what I'm planning to do is throw this around maybe this cable here or maybe up here, probably would make more sense up there. Um, and I'll, what I'll try and do is put everything in frame and I'll adjust the load that is uh, across the CT clamp as much as I can. I've got a heater, I've got the 100 watt light bulb that we used before, I've got, um, there's a couple of levels on the heater and I've also got a couple of other things. So I'll be very interested to know at 100 watts how many amps it's pulling, at um, at 1000 watts or just over how many, watts it's, uh, how many amps it's pulling and as well as um, obviously at full load how many amps it's pulling. Um, it's going to be a very quick test, I'd like to do a better test maybe in the weekend um, when I've got some more room um, and I can actually walk around in the garage. Um, but I just got this clamp meter and I'm really interested to see how many amps we're actually pulling off these cables. So um, I'll just flip the camera around, I'll try and get as much or many things in the view as possible um, with the short amount of space I've got and we'll, uh, we'll have a look. Right YouTubers, with the camera placed on top of the car and everything kind of in focus as much as I can. So we've got our um, normal AC watt meter over there that's connected straight into the extension cord that before it goes into the inverter or the load. So this is going to pick up everything. As you see with the inverter turned on, it's using 6 watts. Um, just with the screen on, doing nothing else. Um, we've got the DC clamp meter up here. It's on 200 milliamps right now, so 0.2 of an amp. And we've got 81.1 volts at the top there. So what I'll do first is I'll turn on my 100 watt light bulb and we'll see what we get. Okay, 100 watt light bulb's on. Uh, now, of course, the um, the watt meter is actually going to only show you what the inverter's putting out over and above what the 100 watt light bulb's actually using. So it's only putting out 15 watts there, but um, the rest of it's going to the um, to the bulb itself. So yeah, 80 volts there. So we've got 1.4, 1 1.8, 1 1.3, 1 1.7, 1 1.8, 1. 1. Yeah. So somewhere between 1.5 and 1.8 amps when we're putting out roughly around 80 watts. So 80 watts, 1.5 to 1.8 amps. Okay, so what I'll do now is I've got a heater plugged in and the heater's got a 750 watt element. So we'll see, uh, I'll turn the light off and we'll turn that on. Okay, so this should be somewhere around the 750 mark. So we're at 9 amps currently. Okay, so 600 watts, 9 amps. That's pretty good. Obviously with our 79 volts. Um, we're putting back out, oh so we're actually using still 32 watts, which is fine. Um, which is actually quite good because it's better to be using some grid rather than um, exporting 30 watts. So, so that's good. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll turn the light bulb on now as well. And that gets up to 700. So around 730 watts is 10 amps, 10.6 amps, 10.7 amps. 
So that's quite useful to know. Um, okay, what else can I turn on? Um, the next element is 1300 and 50 I think it says. So what I'll do is I'll turn it off and I'll quickly turn that on. Okay, so heater's going back on again. This time it's on the bigger heater coil. So it says 1350 but it's not going to be. Okay, so the fan's turned on. Anything over about a thousand watts the fan turns on from me playing around. So the heater says it's 1350 but it's clearly not. It's about a thousand watts. That's probably close enough to our thousand watt load test. 1100 watts roughly. So we're pulling 15, 16 amps. Um, now I did zero this out um, before turning the inverter on. Um, so it's yeah, 16 amps really. So 16 amps for 1100 watts. Um, I'll turn the light on as well. So that'll get us just under 1200 I'd say. Yep. 1200 is 17.6 amps. 17.6, yeah, roughly. It's bouncing slightly. 17.6 to 17, yeah, somewhere around there. That would probably be a good average. Okay, and so 1217, good. What we'll do now is I'll turn on both heater elements, which is just under, which is about what, 1800 and something watts. So I'll turn that on and I'll turn the others off. So this should get us closer to the limit which is 1930. Okay so 1755 is 26 amps. 26.7 amps, it looks like we're pretty solid on that. Okay, um, what I'll do is we'll load it up slightly more before we hit our limit. So that's with the other 100 watt light bulb on. 28.4 amps. 0.5. Well, I'm reading it out because I have no idea what's actually on, if you can actually see it or not. Um, thinking what else we could turn on to try and get that over the to max it out so 28 amps for 1850 watts okay what I'll do is I'll turn on the heat gun and one of the heater elements Okay, so if I actually, no, if I just turn on the heating, so I've got the light bulb on right now, the 100 watt light. If I actually just turn this heat gun on, which is out of frame, but if I turn this on, it says 2000 watts, but it's not. Hopefully we'll get up to our limit and we'll be able to see what we pretty much pull as our max. So 29 amps on the up here. So I've just turned one of the heater, the, the small heater coil on, the heat gun on half, and the light is on. So that's our limit. So that's 30 amps up here. Pretty much our limit. If I turn this on anymore, it's probably going to go over our 2400 watt limit. But, yeah, 30 amps going across that. So hopefully that's answered some questions in a very simple and quick test. Um, 
Well, so that does mean with my at least with my current packs how they are um, with 32p we're actually pulling so if we're pulling 30 amps we're obviously pulling just under well it's going to work out to be about 0.9 amps roughly on average something around there um, per cell 0.9 so we're not even pulling one amp so that's good um, that really does mean that well, most of the time anyway um, when I get this first bank up and going um, the, it's, it's going to mean I'm going to run it at night time um, not when the inverter is going to be needing to go on full uh, I'll run it overnight um, between say 11 o'clock and, and 7 a.m. in which case the load's going to be around the two to 300 watts roughly on the house uh, overnight so that way um, the pack or the cell utilization will be around um, probably what 0.1 or 0.2 somewhere around there maybe 0.3 per cell uh, if we're only drawing 300 watts um, so I'll just bring it up again so 100 watts is 1 amp uh, I'll have to play the video back but it'll be interesting to know how much about 300, amp, uh, 300 watts is uh, which I can't really test right now because I don't have a 300 watt load that's easy to, to get at um, but anyway bit of an update I uh, hope that's um, a bit informative it was really interesting to know how many now this amperage will actually go up obviously as the voltage goes down um, so we're kind of at the you know the, the charge part uh, of the well, the bank is quite charged so when the, the voltage drops down to say 65 volts at the very bottom um, before 60 which is empty in which in which case it'll turn off um, I'm guessing the amperage going across this cable here back to the inverter will be up above we'll, it'll probably get to 35 amps maybe I don't know someone will have to do some calculations and figure it out um, but that'll be interesting to know once the um, once the bank uh, well, the, once the power wall drops in voltage how much extra or how much does the current go up across the cable uh, into the inverter so I, I suppose um, it's not going to be an issue to start with it really isn't it's not going to be an issue for the first 5 kilowatts um, it might be more of an issue for the 10 kilowatts um, but yeah we'll, uh, we'll have to see how we go so thanks for watching guys subscribe if you haven't and um, I'll see you on the next video